it comes to remodeling and renovating your home, there's no better show on your radio. This is Around the House with Eric Chu. On Eric's last visit to Las Vegas, he spent a week at the 2019 Kitchen and Bath Industry Show. Today, he'll be covering what you can look forward to over the next year when it comes to the latest and greatest innovations and designs. And with over a thousand kitchens designed and completed, Eric is just the guy to turn to for all your remodeling questions. Welcome to Around the House with Eric Chu. It's Saturday. Welcome to Around the House with Eric G. This is where we talk home improvement each and every weekend. I'm Eric G. I'm Dane Vodder. What a week it's been. It's oh, been it's crazy. Been crazy. <laughs> well, I say that every week. But this is actually the first week I've been home, so it's been kind of nice, actually. You've had a busy month, and we'll we'll get into that a little bit later. We're going to be talking about your most recent trip to Vegas. That's the fun part. But one of the things I wanted to talk about right off the bat, because this is a color-driven show, I wanted to make sure we get out our phone numbers because they're different this time. They're going to be different from here on forward. That number is 503-521-7072. But here's the thing. That's not going to get you right into the show. That's going to get you into our call system that we've got. And then we're going to call you back and put you in the show. So you can call that number. You can text that number. That way, when you're listening to us all across the country or the podcast, you're now included in the show. So that's going to be a lot easier for everybody else because you don't have to be driving around going, I got a call right now. No, you can call us anytime. That number, 503-521-7072. And I'm personally going to call you back and put you in the show. That's how this is going to work. Normally, you'd get to talk to us live on air, but now you're going to get to talk to us nice and personal-like, and then we'll get you in the show. And we can get into your details a little bit better and make sure we answer that question every single time. Because sometimes we're running out of time. Sometimes people call in. They get hung up in the show, and we can't get to them. And that way, no one's going to get left on hold this way. It's going to end up for a better show, and we're going to help you a lot better. Well, in so many times throughout the show, we'll get callers right in that last segment when it's we really only have just a couple minutes. We can't really take you. Now we'll be able to take every single person that wants, a, that wants to ask us a question. So we're going to help you out with that. Now, here's the thing. I walked a ton of miles last week. <laughs> you walked a marathon. Yes. So about 28 miles, a little, little more than that, looking at my Fitbit in Las Vegas at the Kitchen and Bath Industry Show. And I tell you what. With the Kitchen and Bath Industry Show, it is a long, I mean, it's over a million square feet. And there were 130,000 people is what they're reporting so far wow. that were there. So if you think about it, you know, the Expo Center is not even a tenth of that. It's, it's tiny in comparison. Yeah. So it is, it is super small. Not even a tenth. I think it's like a fifth of that. It's crazy. So here's the thing. This is the industry show that if you watch Home and Garden TV or DIY Network or even Discovery, they will do shows every year late summer about the new trends coming up. Well, that's all from this show. So what we're going to do today is we're going to help you get ahead of all these other TV shows. We're going to talk about it in another four months. You're going to hear about it right now. Well, because guess what? When those things get popular, the price usually goes up. We're going to get you ahead of it. We're going to get you ahead of that bump. So... There were a ton of things there, and I mean, it was kind of cool as an overview. I walked a lot of miles, but I'll say there were some huge trends that were a lot different than last year. You know, last year, in the last five years or so going to the show, and I've not gone to every one, but in general, our trends, color-wise, as, as an example, I'm just going to give you a nice quick overview of the show. Things were gray. We had gray this, gray that, silver this. It was all versions of gray. Wow. Colors? Oh, oh, they're beyond back. This was like an explosion of color. What I mean by that is they had everything from a range company. We're going to talk about this coming up in the next segments. So we're going to get into these details, but you could have a custom color range made. So if you wanted to have your range color match to meet your BMW in the garage, oh, they can do it. Huh. So... You can design your own colors that way. There was even a refrigerator that had a porcelain interior. So instead of having like a stainless steel interior or the white plastic, yeah, it was 
porcelain. I don't want to know what this thing weighed because it had to make this like a built-in refrigerator. So the, the five or 600 pounds probably is now 1,200 pounds. I don't know how you're going to get it in the house. But you could design it out. So think about it as a tile interior, but just big pieces of it. So here's the crazy thing. You could get designs on it of your drawings. Okay. So, so if you wanted to have the, the dog smoking playing poker on the <laughs> front of your refrigerator and the, when you open the door in front of the drawers, you could do that. See, because I was kind of wondering. I'm like, okay, well, that, that, that's kind of a cool idea, but what is that going to bring to your fridge? I mean, it's going to be durable. Don't get me wrong. It's porcelain. So, I mean, you could just about do anything in there. But was it excessive? Yeah. Was it beautiful? Yeah. Will most people want it? No. But I'm talking about it. So obviously it grabbed my attention. If you've got kids, I mean, they can draw yeah, on the fridge, gonna, yeah. I guess. I mean, well, it's, and it's meant to, you're not going to hurt on the inside of the fridge with porcelain. I mean, it, you, I mean, literally on porcelain, the slab porcelain countertops out there, if you were, if you had a fire in the house, there's going to be one thing left and the countertops going to be sitting down in the basement of the crawl space, but they're still going to be there. Cause I mean, it's like space shuttle material. It's just not going to burn up. Yeah. So pretty crazy, but that's where it is. Hey, join us in the conversation. 503-521-7072 is the new number here. 503-521-7072. The thing with paint colors, too, is that you're seeing not even paint colors. I'm talking appliance colors. There are so many different stainless steel, like black, like charcoal stainless steel. Like a, like a matte black Like kind a of matte thing? black, but it's got the stainless steel texture to it. Ooh. So Gen Air had something like that. You know, you've got some... Uh, some different colors with Mila as well that are the similar things. So one thing I noticed just as a, as a whole outside of technology, which we're going to dive into here as well, I was really surprised at how many new colors for appliances that were out there. So that was impressive. When you, when you say new colors, are they just new to appliances? Or new just? to appliances. I mean, it was not like there was a, there was a, a bright blue, but yeah, there was. But different colors of stainless steel. You know, it's always been like, White, black, stainless. That's yeah. all there is. And then there's been some weird kind of one-off colors over the years, but now you're really getting them to to own into that. And I'm seeing the built-in fridges now, a couple companies, where they've got a touch handle on it, so you don't have to have a handle on the fridge. So if you've got that wood panel or decorative panel that's on it, you don't have to put the big, heavy hardware on it. You can touch the door, and it'll auto-open up for you. There you go. Plus, that's good for germs as well. It is. So you're, you're not touching stuff. Now, here's my question. I don't want the dog coming up and bumping it and open it up. So I'm sure they've got some things to figure that out. That's yeah, that kinda, wouldn't be good because... I don't want the pets getting in there. Especially if I'm gone. I don't want them eating all my food. No, don't want the dog going in and grabbing a beer or anything. <laughs> well, unless it's going to bring it to me. Yeah, exactly, unless it's bringing <laughs> me a beer. <laughs> That's a training issue at that point. So here's one thing I want to talk about real quick before we go out to break. We're going to have Robin Daly back on talking paint. And now that we're coming into March here, well, we are in March here. That's the thing. We're getting into paint season where people are starting to think about maybe painting the outside of their house, painting the inside of their house. There's a lot of exterior projects that are going to be coming up, and we're going to bring in the number one paint expert in the Northwest here, and she's going to be taking all your calls as well. So that number to talk paint next week is going to be 503-521-7072. Call us, text us, leave that message. We'll call you back, and you'll be good to go. So that number again, 503-521-7072. 7072. Don't be shy. If you've got that crazy paint question, we're going to get it answered for you because these things make a difference. One of the things that I was talking to her about real quick before we go to break, you know, you see all these paints with primers already built into them. Oh, wait a minute. That's why these paint companies make all these different primers because you've got to still use a primer, even though that paint might have a primer built into it. So we're going to dive into those things next week. But we're going to continue talking about Kitchen of Bass Show and the International Builder Show just as soon as Around the House returns. Hey, this is Farewell Angelina. And you're listening to Around the House with Air G. around the house there gee this is where we talk home improvement each and every saturday this is uh having a good time in the studio today i just want to say give us a call 503-521-7072 give us a call on our 24 7 
line here where we're going to take all of your calls. So that number is 503-521-7072. Make sure you like us on Facebook, which is Around the House with Eric G. Or you can just jump on there and go at ATHKXL. And we're on Twitter. We're on, geez, Instagram. You can find us out there everywhere. Just search Around the House with Eric G. You'll find it all right there. And we put different stuff up at different times on there. So have a good time with all of that. Now, if you're looking to share your projects, we have a group for that as well. We do. It's called Around the House Nation. It is a closed group. All you got to do is, again, just like you did with Around the House with Eric G, go up to that search bar, put in Around the House Nation, request to be a part of it. We'll approve you, get you in there. Really, the only rules we have, everyone play nice and no politics. And then we're good to go. See, that's the fun part with that. And there's a lot of different projects up there as well. And so with that, you'll be able to see... Yeah, you know, a lot of people share projects, what they've done over the weekend, and it's been great. Haven't had to boot anybody yet, so yeah. I like that. Everybody's been super cool. So join the party over there because we're having a good time. Also, ask questions. We have all sorts of people and resources available to you through that group, uh, especially I have a friend of mine who was asking about a toilet. So See? I just wanted to know if that was a good toilet, if it was, you know, if it was long term there were any issues with it and she got her answer it was good it was great and then uh if you want to see all the videos like for my morgan de oregon segment i'm getting ready to do a whole bunch more now that'll be coming up but that's just going to be around the house online.com that is the big website that's got basically everything on it and big announcement last week we are now on spotify yeah so if you're catching your tunes on the way to work and you're listening to spotify you're getting ready to end a road trip don't worry you can like and follow us on Spotify now. And get so, around the house on the go. On the go, 24-7. Live, 24-7. <laughs> right in your automobile. <laughs> so having a good time with that as well. So let's dive back into appliances a little bit here because we've been talking about the Kitchen of Bath show, which uh, they call KBiz, which is from the National Kitchen of Bath Association. So National Kitchen of Bath Association is kind of the, well, they are the leading trade organization for designers that specialize in kitchen and bath out there. So I'm a member of that. That's my dog in the fight there. I'm a certified kitchen designer. There are a lot of different certifications they have, but they're really the only ones out there that focus on the kitchen and bath industry. There's other designers that have uh, more commercial-based stuff. So there's a lot of different, you know, names out there for people. But if you focus on kitchen and bath, NKBA is the way to go. So what they do is they team up with the International Builder Show, which is IBS. That's its own I love those guys, but I don't know about IBS. There's, they might I want to change that. I up. can take that four or five different ways. Problem is, they've been using it for like 75 years. So <laughs> it's what it is. But they call it Design and Construction Week because you've got all the designers and you've got the contractors all in one place. So you could have uh, window and door displays or you could have, you know, Kohler and their big display. Oh, so cool. it's, it's all of the building industry is one which is kind of fun. And it's one of those things that's really cool because you can see both different sides of the industry. So it's, if you're a kitchen and bath designer, let's say, and you want to go learn some more about windows, you can go do that. Or if you're a builder and you're there looking at some of the technology and computer systems they have for builders out there, you can go over and look at uh, appliances for your next project. And so you can kind of mesh both people in together. And it's kind of handy that way because it's just one big trip for everybody. Problem is... It is tough to see all of it. There's too much. There's just too much. And so you really have to plan ahead with what you're going to see because if you started out at 9 o'clock in the morning when they opened the show up and literally just walked, you're probably not going to see the entire show if you stop for food and bathroom breaks. And that's basically the only time you're stopping. Yeah. So it's it's I I, I think you could speed walk the thing and get there, but there's just that many miles. So, and I know this happens about once a year, right? Yeah, it's it once a year. So how much time should somebody set aside if they're going to take a trip out and take a look at it? Say well, three first days? of all, you've got to be in the, you got to be in the, in the trades to do this. This is not, see, that's not a, it's not a retail thing. So you've got to be a kitchen and bath designer. It's not like a home show you're going to. So it's really designed for the trades, but this is where all the big companies and I'm mean, the 90% of them come in and introduce their products in there. So that's the cool part. The unveiling for 2019. It is. It is. You know, there's exceptions. Gen Air decided to do theirs the week before it, uh, Modernism Week. So they didn't have a big booth there, but most of the other big companies did. So it was kind of cool to do that. So that's the basis of what we're doing there. So let's talk about appliances for a minute because that's where I spent some time kind of looking at stuff because 
every year there's big changes out there. You know, I talked earlier about colors and style and things like that. There's a lot more of a, a little more feminine style than the masculine grades we've had over the last few years. But I was really surprised about how technology and style has come back in through appliances now. For instance, uh, you know, at Modernism Week, Gen Air came out with their stuff, and it was beautiful. They've got two different styles, and the two different styles, one of them has more of a, a Mila appliances look, and another one has more of a, um, oh, Blue Star Sub-Zero, a little more professional style with some design to it. So two different kind of ways, kind of the more traditional and what I would call European, if you were going to describe it over the radio to people, which I'm doing right now. <laughs> and... So that was kind of cool, and but they added a lot of cool little styling cues to it, just little feel-good things where the handles were machined and you touch them and they feel good. A lot of those details with knurling and metals and stuff that's kind of fun. But you're starting to see people really start to pay attention to taking care of the food. And what I mean by that is putting filters in that inside the refrigerator that takes the gases out that remove... Basically, when, when, a, when a piece of fruit breaks down, it puts off a certain gas. Yeah. That gas, I'm not going to get into the science of it because it's horribly boring, but that gas is what causes it to further break down. If you can filter that out using UV or filters, then that stuff, Sub-Zero has been doing it for decades. Now, you've got it where you can actually, other brands are starting to do those same things. They're using LED lighting in there to, to get it so when you open the doors up, you can see what's going on. It's got a big temperature display up on the inside. So you know what it is. So as a brand, you're starting to see those things happen. And so that's the fun stuff. We come back, we're going to talk about technology, about how you can talk to all these appliances and make all this stuff happen because that's where it starts to get crazy. We'll do that just as soon as Around the House returns. <laughs> Welcome back to Around the House with Eric G. This is where we talk home improvement every Saturday. I'm Eric G. I'm Dane Vodder. We are talking the kitchen and bath industry show this week. We have got a ton of stuff to talk about. Now, here's the thing. I'm going to share a bunch of this up on our Facebook page. So when you hear me talking about colors and styles and connectivity and all these things that are going on, I'm going to show up there what we're talking about. So head over to... Around the House of Eric G on Facebook, which is just at ATHKXL, like follow, and then I'm going to put up pictures and stuff that we saw from this because I'll tell you what, it was an amazing show, and I want to show you what we're talking about on top of just talking about it because there has been some great products that I don't want you to miss. I uh, saw some little bit of retro kind of coming back. I saw a sink that uh, kind of looks a little 80s to me. There are some cool kind of 80s, even some 90s stuff, and... Uh, We'll talk about that in a minute because there was some crazy stuff with this. One thing I want to talk about here with appliances as we're going, connectivity is huge. Great example. Everybody talks about the connected home and blah, 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 blah. People don't understand what all that is. Here's one thing that I liked about this. Mila, great example. They've got a new hood that is flush with the ceiling that you could put over an island. So let's say you've got a big kitchen. Now, they're not the first ones to make this type of hood, but they're the first to add some technology to it. So let's say you've got this big kitchen with a big island with your cooktop on it. And you're looking out, maybe the view of the city or the view of the ocean, or you're looking out towards the TV. What do people hate? This big hood hanging down in the middle of it that blocks all that. So now what there is, is they made this flush with the ceiling. So it's just a stainless steel panel that's flush up there. And you think, okay, well, no, they're probably the third or fourth company to do that. Not a big deal, except if they've got an induction cooktop, they can now control that with the dial on Ooh. the... So let's say you're warming up chocolate. You're melting chocolate. Fans going, ah, you're not doing much. I might, I might turn on ultra low at the most. Now, if you put a big stock pot on that thing, on that induction cooked up, and you're going to have a big crab boil or something. Awesome. It goes, whoa, they're putting a bunch of BTUs out. Better turn the fan on. So now you don't have to think about the fan. About how, how fast it needs to be, be spinning, spinning or anything. Like that. It's, it's going to do it for you automatically. So it's part 
they've connected those two appliances to be one. Now, my only question with that is, say you have vaulted ceilings, and that you said the hood is flush. Yeah, maybe it's 10 feet up, maybe it's 8 feet up. Then it'll still... It still works. You don't okay. want a flat surface up there for it to work, but it goes right over the top. It's a little bit bigger than the cooktop, so as the steam expands, it gets bigger. It goes up there, and it's going to grab it. still it. cycles. Because I'm so used to seeing the hoods that are so yeah. close to the stove there so that it does catch all the BTUs. Yeah, it's not going to work. I, I'll be honest. It's going to work well, but it's still not going to be as... It's not gonna, it doesn't have a capturability like... It's going to grab the air up there, but you know when you've got a big, thick canopy hood that's right over the top, that's perfect for grabbing yeah. stuff because it's got a capture area in that. That's what that kind of cavity is between that and the screen. But they've got them all dialed in for that, and they do work well. I've got a few clients that I've used other brands like Zephyr, for instance, that I've used, but this one's pretty cool. And I thought, wow, okay, those two are talking to each other, and I like that technology because that makes sense. Now, there's a lot of other stuff where... Now, like Mila, for instance, is another great example. They've got these pods that go in that have all the detergent in it for the laundry and all the fabric softener. So they go in there. So when you start your laundry, you don't have to sit there and pour in the detergent. It's inside the machine ready to go. All you have to do is restock it? Yes. And it'll order it for you. Oh. To make sure you've always got it. So you don't so have to you worry can, about remembering it. You don't have to worry about it. It'll start going, hey, I'm low on detergent. It's going to order it for you, and it's going to show up at your front door. That's crazy. Now, here's the thing. It will also sit there on the, the settings that you do. So if you do hand wash setting, it's going to put it in the amount and style of detergent for hand wash. Now, if you are doing towels, it's going to put in the right amount of fabric softener and that for towels. You don't have to sit there and be pouring or putting as much powder or whatever in there. It does it for you to optimize it for what that machine is going to do. That's super useful. It really and is. you're probably not going to waste as much because many times people, ah, just put in a little more soap. That'll fix it. It's what guys do, especially. Yeah, I've got an laundry. extra dirty clothes. Yeah, yeah i got extra detergent. Soap. Yeah. Uh -huh. Maybe that's not the right thing. Maybe you're putting so much in there that your clothes are getting a little dingy because you put too much soap and there's no way for it to rinse it all out. That'll so, tell you, and, and this new uh, technology is going to take care of that for you. It is. Same with dishwasher, too. Same thing. Wow. So... It can order dishwashing detergent for you. So, interesting stuff. Hey, let's run out to a call here. We've got, uh, from last week, we actually had Dale call in from the Home and Garden Show with some heating air conditioning questions. He's calling back. Dale, welcome to Around the House. I had called earlier about, uh, I live here in Vancouver. I talked about that, uh, putting a heating system in. Yep. And uh, right now I have a, uh, air conditioner in one corner of the living room up in the wall up high okay. and my wife kept telling me to clean the filters I didn't think there was one so it went out on me uh -oh. but I didn't know if this heating system you're talking about in one room if, if it would go up there or where but my other question is who do you recommend if you, if you can because I know legally you know, you're limited <laughs> uh who uh, you could maybe give me some ideas of who to call to talk to me. It's going to be a while before I can do it, but who I could call to, to see about doing that. You know, who I would talk to is uh, Pyramid Heating and Cooling. Those guys are great. They're a sponsor of my show, but they work on my house, too. So that's who I would work with. And uh, they would come out and take a look at it and see where your current air conditioner is, if that's a good spot, and it easily could be. Okay. So how do you, I got a heating and air conditioning, but how do you spell the pyramid? So it's, do you want to just give them a call or do you want to give them, do you want to jump onto, uh, jump onto their website? Either one, it doesn't matter. Okay. Yeah. Their website is just, uh, pyramidheating.com. Okay. So how do you spell, uh, pyramid? Oh, pyramid. That's just easy. That is P Y R A M I D. M I D. Okay, I thought so. I knew I had somehow I had it with a P E. Oh, so, there yeah, you go. Okay. It's just pyramidheating.com. You got it, and they'll take care of you. And uh, that's who I was with the home show uh, last week here on. So uh, they'll get you taken care of, and there might even be some energy rebates and stuff in your area that might save you some money, too. Okay, well, yeah, I just need to know it's going to be a while. We're redoing the house, but, uh, you know, we had to put a window AC in, 
and uh, trying to find uh, uh, that company and see if they make them anymore is kind of rough. So I'm thinking, well, gee, if, if I could do a one room in the living room, I mean, that's the main room I need. And then uh, if they would go there, fine. If not, I can plug that hole up and put it somewhere else. But all of my rooms have uh, the little built-in wall heaters. Yep. And I even have one in the kitchen or dining room and one by our fireplace. I'm like, I don't need them. No. I don't, here's even, the... I don't even use them. No, here's the thing. You'll be able to eliminate all those if you put the right system and let them design one out. You'll eliminate that. It's going to save you probably half on your heating bill, and then you'll have AC yeah. that'll keep the whole house cold. So you'll be set to go. Well, that's how I was thinking. I kind of like to have a whole unit. So It will change your life, man. That's the way to go. <laughs> so do you have any idea approximately how much they run rough ball per year? You know, Not they're... counting the construction, just the unit itself. You know, I don't know because they have to size it. They're really wide ranging in price depending on what size you know, what it's okay. what to go in there. So they really need to come out, take a look at your house, walk through it, and then you know, it's just depending on what power has to be done. You know, it's 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 probably the most affordable thing you can put in there versus a regular system. Right, so, right. I, well, I understand that. You know, you're in, the, you're in the thousands of dollars, not tens of thousands, but it's just depending on what you got going on out there. Okay, that's what I was wondering, whether I'm looking at like maybe four or five or 15 or 20. Yeah, you're, you're, <laughs> you're, you're in that uh, and for most cases, you're in uh, and again, depending on how big the house is, you're in that uh, four to eight range, not fifteen to twenty in many cases. Now that is doable. <laughs> See, yeah, so, they, they probably even take payments or something. Oh, they got a ton of stuff, man. They got a ton of stuff, so they're good people that way. So uh, they'll get you taken care of. Okay, well, thank you very much. Hey, great, Dale. Thanks for calling into around the house. I really appreciate it. No problem. You have a good day now, sir. You too. Thanks. All right, when we come back, we'll be talking more about technology and stuff. From KBiz, just as soon as Around the House returns. Welcome back to Around the House with Eric G. This is where we talk home improvement each and every Saturday. Thanks for joining us. I'm Eric G. I'm Dane Vodder. We're having a great time in the studio here today talking about technology, everything from the kitchen to bath industry show. It was a lot of fun in Vegas. A lot of walking, but a lot of fun. When is it not a lot of fun in Vegas? Yeah, good point. But I was doing a lot of work and I was doing a lot less partying, a lot more work in this time. It's even though it's Vegas, still had a good time. You though. still made time for the good time. Oh, yeah. Well, it just made it into work. <laughs> Pushed melded those two together. Two. Yeah, melded the two together. So you can still have a cocktail at 10 o'clock at night and still have a meeting. Why aren't we having a cocktail right now? Eh, good point. Right, because we're on the clock. Oh, good point. <laughs> no, wait, wait a minute. We might have to change that in the future. Huh. I like this. Something to think about. Hey, join us in the conversation. 503-521-7072 is the new number here. 503-521-7072. We're going to be talking next week about painting, so I want to get a bunch of calls in on that. So uh, if you've got painting questions, you've got painting troubles, Maybe uh, that finish keeps failing on your exterior house. Maybe the uh, finish on the deck is failing. Let's talk a little bit more about that. So give us a call at 503-521-7072, and I'll call you back, and we'll put you on the next show. Now, here's the thing. We've been talking technology here, and technology is big with appliances. Now, here's where that pays off, and I just want to touch on this. You can be at the grocery store now, and almost every new refrigerator now is coming out with a camera in it. You know, I don't want people looking at my refrigerator. Well, guess what? When you're trying to think if you've got milk in the fridge or if you've got sauces or maybe, man, do I still have lettuce in there? Now you can look while you're at the store on your smartphone. So it's kind of cool. You can do those kind of things now, and those things will start to talk to each other. And now you're going to be able to start getting all the appliances to talk to each other as well. And that makes a big difference in this connectivity stuff that you can literally jump on your phone app Re, re, hit the restart on your dishwasher to run your dishwasher while you're at work. Oh, the kids put it in before sh when they went to school in the morning. You could start it while you're at work. Now you can turn around when it's, hey, I'm leaving the office. I better preheat that oven for the pizza I'm grabbing home and preheat that at 475 and have that hot when you walk in the door without trying to get a hold of somebody at the house. So that's where that stuff starts to pay off. 
kind of curious where this is going to go because I'm trying to think to myself, like, okay, from here we've got the fridge, got the freezer maybe, yep. we'll get that. But now we're talking like spice cabinets, stuff yep. like that. How uh, you know? Because eventually it's just going to be, we'll be able to look at almost everything we have as far as the food pantry goes. Can I tell you where it's going to go? Yeah. It's going to go with your refrigerator. You're going to go out and start drinking the milk. It's going to know that you've consumed how much milk every time you pull it out of there. Then it's going to go on to Amazon, and it's going to order it for you. <laughs> and you're never going to have to go grocery shopping unless you want to input different stuff in there. But you could literally start to the point where you're going to be able to, in the next year probably, maybe two, that as you consume those products, it's going to auto-renew, and your milk's going to show up on the Amazon delivery thing at the time when you're home from work. And you're, it's going to be like the milkman, but it's going to be the food man, and they're going to be showing up all the time knowing what you consumed and if the kids ate too much of one thing let's say they blasted through the ice cream after you went to bed and they came down and do it they're going to know about it it's going to have no ice cream the next day i don't know how many parents are going to be happy about the replenishing ice cream i know but at least they're <laughs> going to know about it true you're not going to go in there anymore and be able to go in there and go what happened to all the ice cream well and there's you're going to notice that it just reordered a bunch of ice cream and they're going to wonder where the ice cream went well and if there's a camera in there you can see who's been taking all the ice cream exactly now, if I can do it for my bar in the liquor cabinet, ooh, now you got it. Th that's gonna be that's gonna be the money maker. That's right there. the money maker right there. When somebody's got that dialed in with a bar cabinet, all of a sudden it goes in the freezer and it's like, hey, where'd my vodka go? Maybe you can keep the kids out of it. Maybe you can make sure you got it. And I don't know if that's a good thing or a bad thing, depending on your habits and your good or bad habit situation. Just remembering from when I was younger, I'm not saying I did this, but I had friends who did this. What happens when they refill it with water? Well, it's probably going to have an error because if it's got a product in there and it knows how much it came out and then you come back and there's more in the, unless they dialed it incorrectly. I was going to say, so it will be able to tell. Now, the thing is, I want to have it see, maybe you can set it so it has an alarm that it'll, you know, maybe there's a setting on there come forward where you'll be able to set that alarm up and go, huh, who got into the fridge last night? You record or the your voice going, hey, get out of my vodka. Get out of my vodka. So, you know, there's things that are going to happen with that. I think you're going to be smart. And I think that's going to pay off pretty good. Give us a call on our 24-7 line here where we're going to take all of your calls. So that number is 503-521-7072. Now, the other thing I thought saw that it was super cool that uh, Perlick had, they had a refrigeration unit that went in your bathroom vanity. So if you're going to have a bathroom vanity, you can have all your cold towels and things, maybe some drinks in the bathroom. You're good to go. All right, that wraps up hour number one. We're going to step into hour number two, where the podcast is. Make sure you don't miss it just as soon as Around the House returns.